Hello, hello, welcome. Hi, welcome. We're gonna wait for everybody to get in and then welcome, we'll start. Welcome. <laughs> we love to see faces if you feel like turning <laughs> your cameras on. Yep. Yeah. And I'm on work, still on work on the um, Zen Z, whatever it's called, and I love this. Yeah, I'm enjoying yeah, it. To show so it a little much. bit. <laughs> and the instructions are so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Oh, great. Yeah. And how are you ladies doing? We're good. We're, we're good. Fine. We just both got back from vacations. So I think I we're know. a little bit so like all rested. back into it. <laughs> but all right, we'll get started. Um, I am Suzanne Nielsen. I'm one of your hosts for today. Um, and we also have Laura Cameron here. She does a lot of the sample knitting, so we get to see a lot of her work today. And um, she's also starting a new job tomorrow, right, Laura? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but <Yeah>. in the <laughs> so uh, so we might not get quite as many samples out of her as we had before. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> she'll probably still leaving. Um, and then of course Roxanne is with us. I don't know if she'll pop in here, but Roxanne is the whole creative director of Zen Yarn Garden and. The reason we're all here. So thank you, Roxanne. <laughs> um, and the idea for today was um, just to get to show off some of the new uh, patterns and samples and yarns that we have. Um, and of course, just have a little bit of fun. So we are giving away um, two gift certificates today. So just like our normal format, if you've been with us before, we're going to ask a question um, and then have you answer it. And we'll um, It'll be randomly picked out of any of the right answers. Um, so Laura's going to do that uh, partway through. But we also wanted to give everybody um, a discount. So everybody that is here is getting 25% off of everything on the website. Um, and the code for that is Yarn Party. Um, so we'll be posting that information in the chat along with links to the things that we're showing. Um, so keep that open. And you can click on the chat and it, it will open. Um, open the pages for you. And we also do free shipping on order, orders over 49. Um, so that's really good to the US and Canada. Um, yeah, uh, anything else I'm forgetting, Laura? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. We'll have some trivia questions for you later on. Um, and the discount is good until 11.59 p.m. on March 12th, so that's a week from today, so you have a week to think about it and shop, and we're going to show you some of our newest samples and also some of the other things. Um, we've added some new products, and we also have some oldies but goodies, so um, mm -hmm. we're going to try and hit them all. We just realized we hadn't seen you in a while because we haven't um, done a Vogue Knitting or a Stitches West recently, um, mm -hmm. and so we decided we're just going to throw our own party. <clears throat> Yay! <laughs> so thank you for coming. Um, we, we've we got uh, more Tutorial Tuesdays coming up too that are a little different, so that will be fun. Um, but I'll just go ahead and start. Our first sample that we're going to show um, is called the Snow, Snow Mantra um, Shawl, and it is a gorgeous, just really large, stunning shawl. We did do a Tutorial Tuesday on this one, um, so if you uh, didn't catch that, then you can go back and look at the recordings. Um, it's really an interesting one because it is um, top down. So you start um, at the top and, and work your way out. Um, but you actually do an I-cord bind off like every few rows. So, so if you can see all the green here um, are some I-cord bind off rows, um, which just gives it a really interesting texture and really shows off that crazy kind of shape that you're making. You do like I forget what it is, Laura, like one into 17 or something, and then you decrease by a whole 18? bunch and increase mm -hmm. um, to get that crazy, crazy shape. Um, so Laura did knit this entire one. I did a little sample, like just a little ways. And it, it, I was saying in the um, in the, the the tutorial Tuesday Zoom that we did that at first I was thinking like, this is going to be super annoying, but after I did a sample, it's it's kind of fun. It, it goes by quicker. Now, Laura might say something different because she was, you know, in the <laughs> extremely long rows, but <laughs> what did you think, Laura? <laughs> No, it's actually, it is simpler than it looks. Um, at its base, the shawl is 
think about it a little bit like you would do feather and fan to create ripples and to create those shapes. And then this just takes that a little bit more to the extreme. So every mm -hmm. time you're increasing, you're doing way more increases. And every time you're decreasing, you're doing way more decreases. So, um, you know, you've got your one into 19 and your one into nine and your nine into one. Um, <laughs> and so, and there's lots of little bits and pieces, but once you get through the first repeat or two of the pattern, it's basically the same thing over and over and it's just growing so you're doing more of it each time you start mm -hmm. at the center at the top um and like I said you're just it's it is repetitive it's kind of soothing I will say the long rows at the end are long um <laughs> but the overall effect is just gorgeous and you do so learn a we, lot of techniques you get that yes. I cord bind off plus it's hard to see it here but this whole section I don't know right there uh huh. Is like one row, so you're actually like knitting, and then you're doing a bunch of kind of short rows. Some short row shaping. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just really interesting um, techniques. And now this one, we used one um, one gradient cake, and then two solid colors. Um, one of which was just natural, and then the other one was this pink. Um, and we also have it kitted up so that you could use just one gradient. And then, and then two uh, skeins of the natural, um, which would be beautiful too, I think. But this is the, we have the kit for this exact one up. And then if you want to choose your own, um, there's just a lot of different options, of course. <laughs> but it's a really nice um, big shawl. So, you know, I was wearing it like a bandana, but you could put it a little sideways and do the um, here's my trick. I know I've shown it before, but if you put this side of your shawl first and then this side over the top, it kind of locks it in and you can bend over and, and get more done without even having a shawl pin. Um, so that's the trick uh, for shawls with this one. You can also do any kind of like actually tie it, um, tie it around or um, or just wear it backwards too. Or okay. this one's big enough to do, there's my like knotted <laughs> version to answer or... the question kim it would definitely be easy to make it larger um the only concern is how much more yarn you would need because um i will tell you the end rows are about 700 stitches wide i know it doesn't look like that but because of all the rippling and up and down so um each each section takes more yarn at the end um so you definitely could do it but you'd probably need to buy you know either an extra gradient or um i had plenty if you just wanted to make it a little bit bigger you'd probably need to buy an extra gradient um but mm -hmm. not necessarily extra of the white and pink because i had plenty of those um if you wanted to do it the opposite direction you would need to buy an extra gradient so um well again an extra gradient so yeah. um just the yardage is there is a lot of yardage in this one um but other than that yes um it's basically um you have each repeat is you about can. six rows and you have two versions of the six row repeat and you're just alternating them throughout the shawl so you could easily just add you know section it two sections more four sections more six sections more etc yeah also you could stop anytime because you actually do a full bind off right so mm -hmm. you could just like say oh i'm done <laughs> yeah all of, all you of wouldn't those have to like you know i don't know bind off after you thought that but um well but yeah, it, 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 yeah the rippling bridges those are all i cords and basically you're doing an i cord bind off there and then you're going back and picking up stitches from those so you could stop at any point that you wanted to but it's really big i mean i'm six two and so my wingspan is is more than six feet and it's much it's even longer than my wingspan so it really is a big shawl um but yes <laughs> yeah i mean there's there's probably 1600 yards in there so it's, it's <clears throat> quite a deep shawl. yeah I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we can look at um we can look at the kits. So, um this is the kit. These are the photos, these are the colors as written. So, um this was we used a uh in just a second we used a skein of 
pink and white in the Serenity Silk Plus, and then we used one gradient throughout it. And um, I started at one of the green ends and I ended up with kind of the multicolor in the middle. And that's how I ended up with the shawl that I ended up with. We talked about whether or not you could reverse and say use the gradient in the portions where the white and pink were, and then use um, just white for the um, kind of squiggles and the accent colors. And you could, but you'd have to order the yarn in different amounts because um, it would take more than one skein of the white to actually be able to do that. So um, <clears throat> we also have a kit available. So this is the first kit, the Snow Mantra shawl kit in the original as written. And then we also have it available with any of our gradients that you're interested in. So you could just knit your own. Mm -hmm. um, so with these natural. are all of our so, Yeah. You just want that really high contrast, obviously, because otherwise you wouldn't see all this work you're doing <laughs> as much. You'd yeah. still get the texture, but anyway, yeah, I'm really liking this one now. Maybe I will finish so, my sample. The pattern is extremely well written. It has lots and lots of photos to show you um, what you are, to show you all of the different stitches. She takes lots of photos of how to do all of the increases, but we also cover that in um, our tutorial Tuesday, which we, um, which we shared um, a few, we had that one a few weeks ago, and I put a link in the um, chat to all of our uh, tutorial Tuesdays. I'll put that in again, um, and so you could find details there if you wanted to knit this one. Yay. All right. And let us know if you have any questions um, or, or want to see anything else too along the way. We're happy to go off course. <laughs> but let's see, our next um, our next one that I get to show you is called On the Double. And this is a very special because it's crocheted. So for all of you out there that um, are crocheters or, um, you know, want to want to learn. <laughs> um, this is a really neat one. It's it's a beautiful poncho. It uses three colors um, of the Serenity um, 20 or the um, uh, super fine fingering. It's a fingering weight. And it's just a beautiful poncho. Um, <clears throat> it has granny squares at the bottom. Um, and then a lot of um, double crochet, I think, just plain, and then a nice border around the edge. But I think it really just shows off like this three color combination. And we are going to have a, um, we are going to have the designer come and do a tutorial Tuesday on the crochet. So if you don't know how to crochet yet, come and join us for that. Um, and, and we will walk you through this pattern. Um, Mary Beth Temple is the designer, and she is going to come and do the tutorial Tuesday uh, in April, I think it is? Nope. March. March 14th and 21st. March. All right. Um, so. On March 14th, we'll do the introduction to the granny squares, which you see along the edges. And then um, on March 21st, we're going to do the double crochet, which is all the, um, the, the thick color block stripes. Those are all done in double crochet. Mm -hmm. And even though crochet, it's still like, I don't know if you can tell, but it's still just drapey and soft. It's not like tight crocheted for, you know, I don't know, amigurumi or anything. It still feels flowy and like you'd want to wear it as a garment. So especially because it's the Serenity 20 with cashmere. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to show you a few things in a minute, but I put a link in um, the chat to all of the bundles that are available. It's three skeins of super fine fingering, and we have made bundles available in a variety of colorways. The one that Suzanne is wearing is called Electric Blue. And it is in the um, semi-solid at the bottom is electric blue. And I don't know what the other two are, but they're going to be the variegate and the speckle that contrast with it. Um, I will mm -hmm. open that and look at that in a minute. And I'm going to show you all those bundles so you'll be able to see. Um, but the electric blue bundle is the one that Suzanne is wearing. Mm -hmm. This one, again, you want some contrast. Otherwise, you'll lose the, the detail in the granny square. But it's really a good one, I think, to you know get creative with your with your coloring and whatever you want. <laughs> okay, so let me um, let me share my screen for just a moment. Let's do it. Um, so the first thing is this is the on the double pattern. Oops, let me 
me get my, this is the On the Double Pattern, uh, the Wrap Shawl by Mary Beth Temple. It is available on Ravelry, um, and it talks about how it uses super fine fingering. Um, it is easy, and like I said, we're going to do the tutorial Tuesdays. I went ahead and put the links for both of those. You can register for both of those, um, and they are free to attend, but you do need to register uh, so that we'll send you the links for those. We don't just publish them because we had a few unfortunate Zoom bombing incidents. So um, totally free. Come join us. They're super fun. And all you have to do is fill out the registration form, which is just your name and your email. So um, it's not very, not very difficult. And these are the bundles that we have put together. Um, so you'll notice that basically we have a semi-solid in all of them, a variegate, and then kind of a speckle. Um, and like I said, the one that we used in the pattern is the one in the center here, the electric glue bundle. Um, but you can order any of these bundles um, and it will be enough yardage for you to do the pattern. Um, Ooh, and somebody's so gotta got to do those turquoise ones. I know, right? <laughs> they all look amazing. I kind of like the turquoise black. I like the sour apple. Yeah, um, or teal blue oh. bundle. I like the magenta one too, if you're looking at doing the Pantone color of the year. Oh, you know, there you go. Adding some pink to your life. So those are all there. And again, these are all eligible for the 25% discount with the code yarn party. And as soon as you at 70 at $72, even with 25% off, you're probably going to hit the 49 for free shipping in the US. So um, you know, stock up on yarn and join us. That does not mean you have to buy yarn to join us. If you have a Zen yarn garden in your stash, you're welcome or or other yarns. Anything, we, yeah. We will allow other yarns, but come join us for the tutorial too. Tuesday and learn how to make the on the double poncho. So yes. let me stop sharing and get back to you. Let's see if we have any other. Okay. okay. Yeah. I just, if you really see a bundle you like, but you are not into crochet, I'm close to finishing a pattern that's going to be um, also use these same three colors um, or same, you know, combination of three colors. It's it's really like a, a solid color and then the variegated, but the, the speckle splatter and the variegated are the same colorway, um, just the different technique. So they really coordinate well together, even though they contrast. So that's kind of, you know, the magic of Roxanne and Neville there that do that <laughs> dyeing to get you those coordinating colors. Um, that contrast. And um, all right, and now, Laura, I think you get to do your gift certificate. <laughs> so this is pretty funny because I just looked at the question and I was like, oh, I didn't actually give the answer, but oh, you might have oh, noticed oh. it when I showed you the... Um... Choose a different one. <laughs> 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 we should make people show us. I see some people wearing their Zen. <laughs> Okay, um, let's, or we I'm going to make, this, do it I'm going to use the second question now and I'll think of another good question. Okay. Um, okay. So what crochet technique is going to be shown by Mary Beth Temple um, in our upcoming tutorial Tuesdays? I'm mm -hmm. going to pick winner number five. So let's see. Let's see what we've got. We've got one, two, three, four, five. That's going to be Deborah Sue Pate. So um, go ahead and message Zen Yarn Garden here in the chat, give her your email address and she will get you your uh, $10 gift card. That $10 gift card can stack with our 25% discount. So, um, and any sale items, we'll be showing you some sale items later. Um, and you can also get the 25% on those and you can apply your $10 gift card. So we love things that stack. Um, so um, we're always excited about that. Yes. Yay. All right. And we still have another gift certificate too. So uh, stay with us <laughs> and uh, a random question that we will cover. <laughs> um, all right. Next, we get to show um, a like, I think it's still, I don't know, still, but at one point it was definitely the most knit item um, in Ravelry, the baby surprise jacket. And this is like just fabulously cute <laughs> and um it's just one skein so it's really simple um knit all flat and then you um it's kind of like origami it folds together and all you need is a seam across the top um but what's really cool about it being knit flat with the is that the way the coloring um you really see you kind of see the direction of the knitting you're knitting here and then doing a corner um, and going around um, the back. And Laura I'd knit this one too, but we are going to do a tutorial Tuesday on this one. Um, just to just to go over it, it is garter stitch. So 
I've knit a couple of these <laughs> and it goes really fast. You can even make it bigger. Um, I believe this is like a baby size, but actually I had a friend's daughter over who's, um, she's like five and she would put it on over a little tank top and it looked really cute. So I might be able to get some pictures of that too. Um, so but anticipating uh, our question, uh, we, we just got asked what yarn and weight did we use? Uh, yes. <laughs> So oh, this is the yarn garden. This is this is super fine DK. Um, oh, and actually, I would say this is this is not a newborn weight. This is DK. Um, and I knit it on size five needles. Um, the thing about the baby surprise jacket is um, even as written, it's a little bit nebulous as to exactly what size you're going to get. Basically, if you use thinner yarn and smaller needles, you'll end up closer to newborn. And if you use thicker yarn and larger needles, you'll end up closer to toddler size. Um, you know, one to two year size. Um, and the question is that, uh, you know, you, you kind of have to just lean into it and know that the sweater will fit the baby at some point. Um, because, <laughs> because it kind of, it's, it's a little bit of magic and garter stitch is so squishy and stretches so much that that actually trying to get gauge and and Elizabeth Zimmerman didn't really write it in gauge. Um, if you have ever used an Elizabeth Zimmerman pattern, you'll know that it's kind of a few notes on the back of, of a napkin. Um, and I will say that for the um, for the baby surprise jacket, there are two ways to do this. One is you can get one of the Eliz original Elizabeth Zimmerman patterns, and I didn't bring it with me, but um, mine is in the book Knitting Without Tears, which is a collection of all of her newsletters. Um, there is also a version, if, if you're a little bit averse to Elizabeth Zimmerman's kind of fly by the seat of your pants, there is also a version of the pattern that you can order from Schoolhouse Press that was put together by Meg Swanson, Elizabeth Zimmerman's daughter, and it goes oh, through the Karen pattern. Oh, Karen linked it to a, linked it for us. <laughs> um, uh, you can Let actually just get the baby surprise jacket. Um, uh, the book version includes the adults. Um, oh, I will adults, pull yeah. a link for that in just a second. Um, I didn't specifically have that available today, but um, so you can get any of the, um, so you can either get Elizabeth Zimmerman's, Zimmerman's Knitting Without Tears, and that's the one that has um, the Elizabeth Zimmerman version, which is literally just her notes, and I'm going to get the Schoolhouse Press link now for you. Um, I'll just open it up. We have just like cute little toggle buttons. Um, you do do the buttonholes as you go. So, um, well, and, this and one too, so a couple I've... things I will say. I used oh. two skeins of yarn, um, oh, and I alternated sorry. the skeins. And even with the alternating of the skeins, I got a little bit of pooling, which I think is fine um, mm -hmm. because I think it's cute. I, I don't think it's really a problem. Um, but I did do that. The other thing is that I will tell you that the um, the buttonholes, um, she kind of just says, go ahead and knit seven buttonholes on this row. And she doesn't tell you how to space them or where to put them. And so I ended up putting mine kind of all more towards the top, but you certainly could space them out um, so that they are, um, so that they go um, even up to bottom. Or all the way the down. Yeah. Sorry. I and unbuttoned it, it like, but I was going to rebutton it, it back. Like so yeah, this is just at the top. Elizabeth Zimmerman's surprise jacket. It looks like it's called the complete surprise and I'm putting the link in there, but there is also, um, if you really there's, just want to knit the baby surprise jacket, there is a, um, hang on. Just and we'll, second. we're going to do the tutorial Tuesday about this one. So we'll go much more into detail on then. Um, but and this one is just um, it's a little bit less expensive and it's just the um, baby surprise jacket pattern, um, but it also has it for children and adults. So mm -hmm. I've given you a couple links to this. Um, I literally just used my book. So okay. if you have an Elizabeth Zimmerman book that has it in there, you can certainly use that. Um, it's just if you want a little bit more. Uh, mine sort of said, do this until you get to, oh, I don't know about these stitches and then do this and then do this a little bit more and then do this a little bit more. So mm -hmm. if you want more direction than that, you might buy one of the Schoolhouse Press versions that has it written out line by line. Um, yeah. But it's not it's hard. A good one and too is... for um, striping. Like if you have just a little mm -hmm. bit of scrap yarn, I've done this, uh, the surprise and the the final thing that you're doing is knit all the way down here 
all the way across the bottom and then back up the other side. So you could just end with a different color for the last few rows and it kind of makes a nice border. Um, then you could go back and put a border on the, the cuffs if you wanted to match or something, but it's kind of a fun one to just throw in a few rows of some scrap yarn because you don't have to make sure that you, um, it's, it's a little easier to only have like one or two rows of a different color. And still look cool. And I will say that even Elizabeth Zimmerman kind of tells you um, where you are in the process. She's like, now you're going to add a few rows here and this is going to be the sleeves. And you're like, I don't know how this is going to be the sleeves. And then at the end, you're left with this really odd looking piece of fabric. And then you just kind of fold it twice and it's a sweater. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> it's really cool. So if you haven't um, done one before, I highly recommend it. And if you have already done one, then, you know, try it. You can experiment a little bit more with it and do something um, different. But I think so this, reasons, yeah, oh. this feels squishy, like DK. But my, mm -hmm. I've done it in fingering weight too, and it, it comes out. I've done it in fingering and it ends up oh. more newborn sized. Yes. So part of the reason that we wanted to do this is because we have a whole bunch of great new art walk colors that I'm going to show you right now. Um, and they are by um, artist. Oops, hold on. Let me share. They are by Diane, artist Diane Wickens, who is um, local to, I'm guessing local to Zen Yarn Garden. Um, oops, that's the wrong. Let me go back to here. Um, and Diane Wickens has done a bunch of, as you know, um, the way Zen Yarn Garden does their art walk colors is they take a piece of art and then they try and abstract from it the colors that they want to put onto yarn. Um, and I'm just going to use this as a, the example because we're here. So this was the original painting. It's called The Pink Chair. And um, then they went ahead and translated those pinks and yellows and grays onto yarn. But there actually are a number of colorways here. Um, so you could choose from any of these colorways. They've got lots oh, of fun ones. Um, and variegated actually tends, it works just fine for this pattern because of the way you're kind of varying your rows and you're increasing and decreasing. So you're not gonna get a huge amount of pooling. Um, and ooh, that teal one, that this one, Isabella, that one looks amazing. Oh, and look at the cute yeah. little picture. I love how they take these pictures and oops, that one sold out, but isn't that cute? So and cute. then they translated it to yarn. So um, you could choose from any color. Like I said, I used um, two skeins and I used uh, ultimately the total that I used was about a skein and a half, um, but I went ahead and wound them into cakes and alternated every two rows so that I wasn't, um, I wasn't going to get some obvious pooling or like an actual line in the garment where I changed, but I had a little bit left over. You could probably even make like some booties if you wanted to, to kind of go with it. Um, probably not quite enough for a hat because I think I only had about, well, maybe I had enough for a hat. I'll have to weigh it. Um, Headband? So yeah. Be cute. <laughs> Yeah, or a little headband, that would be super cute. So, and then um, as one of the commenters suggested, Elizabeth Zimmerman um, actually suggests that you can um, put buttonholes on either side so that you can decide, you know, which side they belong on. I tend to just pick a side and I don't mm -hmm. care that much. Also, it helps. I, I do it even if I know what side sometimes because then you know right where to sew your button on and you don't have to mm -hmm. like line it up and blah. It's a good way to do it. I like it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so we, we just decided we needed a small project that would be easily teachable. Um, I did put the, um, I will put it again, we're going to be doing the tutorial Tuesday on this one, and this one's not until April 18th. So if you wanted to order some yarn to knit along with us, you're welcome to. Our buttons came from a seller on Etsy that um, Roxanne added to the chat, um, but you could use any buttons. This was just, I finished and said, what would you like me to use? And she said, I want to find some pink toggle. Oh yeah, I could add a hood. Well, I can't add a hood now because it lives with Suzanne and she does not live in the same state with me. But um, yes, yeah, so I could have added a hood. <laughs> <laughs> we need a Zen retreat where we could all like get together. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> all right. Um, so next we um, we get to show a new yarn. And then I think after that, we'll do the last giveaway. Um, yeah. So our the newest one, which I haven't even knit with yet, but I have one. It is a glitter cake. So I don't know if you can see, well, but yes, a little bit of glitter, and it really is. It looks kind of red in the picture. It looks like, but it is. Um, this one is a bit more like fuchsia, I would say. the The yarn name is um, bouquet, and then this one is um, like a purpley 
Um, the, the colors on the website that we'll link to are more accurate. Um, but it is uh, super fine. It's fingering weight um, with the Stellina in it. It's not scratchy at all. It's really still super soft. Um, and it is 680 yards in this cake. So there's a lot of um, shawls out there that you can do or, I don't know, let your mind go crazy with it. You could do um, a lot of different things. A couple of, let's see, like a couple of my designs that would work really well with it are the San Diego. This one was made from just a 400 yard skein, but the way the pattern is, um, you can just keep going, um, just add sections until you run out of yarn, um, just have to save a little bit for the bind off. Um, and then um, it would look really neat in any of these gradients um, or the onward shawl also, it was written for the, slightly larger um, super fine cakes, but it would work with, um, it would also work with this cake. You can just stop a, a section earlier than you would have if you had more yarn, um, or you could get two cakes and make it even bigger, um, whichever you would like. But this is the same type of shape. Um, this one has eyelets. I don't know if you can see close up, it has eyelets that run throughout it. Um, but both of these shawls have a loop. Um, that you um, you do a very small little seam here to create that loop um, just for easy wearing. So I will put it on and um, yeah, then it stays put because it has a loop there. <laughs> um, it's, it's pretty adjustable uh, to any size. And like I said, it's written so that you can do more sections or less sections as you see fit. Um, and it has a little um, I-cord edge on the bottom that you can't really see, but it just has a nice finished finished look. Um, so that's what I would dream of for these. And I might be thinking of something else, but I'm not a very fast designer. If you don't notice, <laughs> it takes me a little while to get around to things, but um, the, first my idea, the, the ideas Santiago are like popping. Shawl. The first one was the San Diego shawl and the second yes. one here links to the patterns. And the second one is the onward shawl. And they we both will have get the, to the same top the um, border with the um, with it's a little bit of a special I cord because um, I didn't want the I cord to pull too tightly. Um, so you need to give it a few extra extra stitches um, in there. But that is they're both we very simple, mindless patterns. Once you get started, you just go um, and. Um, yeah, but they're fun because you're you're you are doing some short rows um throughout so you can kind of work a section at a time and yeah. we will <laughs> get right. to the top behind Suzanne in a minute or two so just give us just give us a bit it's on our list I shouldn't have put it in there <laughs> <laughs> so I will just show you real quick um the gradient the the glitter cakes that we have the glitter gradients we have them available in quite a number of colors I was actually showing you the inferno one which is up at the top here but we have them available in I believe 13 colorways so um and those are great for knit till you run out of knit till you run out shawls um someone who does a lot of those is um Susan Ashcroft I also know who was the one who did, well, I guess they were in Miss Babs Yazza, but those were knit till you run out. Um, Stephen West has a couple patterns that are kind of knit till you run out. Um, so any of them where you can basically, it just keeps growing and you just go till you run out of yarn. <laughs> yep, and then usually, or then bind off at the end. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just save a little bit enough for a bind off. Okay, yes. so let's do All the right. second gift card. Um, yes. and go ahead and open your chat window. And the question is, what colorway did we use for the baby surprise jacket? Oh, that's this tough time one. I know I said it. <laughs> but that's tough. It is tough. You could link to the link to the, the uh, you know, somebody could find okay. it. By um, clicking Liz, on it. Liz K was the first one who got it. So Ooh, Liz nice K the answer is the pink chair. Y'all are pretty good. Um, yeah. I, I did say it. It, it wasn't big, <laughs> but I did say it. That was tricky. Um, Keep so on Liz Kate, go ahead and message Zen Yarn Garden in the chat, and she will get you your $10 gift card. <laughs> Yay. <clears throat> okay. All right. So now we, let's see. 
Do I do? Yeah. So we also have um, a special grab bags. So we've been doing these for a little while. Um, they are discounted and they are, you know, what you see is what you get. So it's like a collection of um, colorways, but it's only, you know, maybe one or two of each color that you see. Um, so they do they do go fast, um, but like we said, you can use your 25% out discount on top of it. So there's a lot in here that would be great for um, all the shawls that we've shown today, um, like especially this one that needs three colors of fingering weight. Um, we've got a lot of um, super fine fingering and um, just a lot of different things. The the mini skeins um, are are fun for different you know, color work adding together or just throwing a hit of color. Um, anyway, these are where you get to be super creative and and go crazy and just see something that you that you like. <laughs> I always see a few as I'm going by that I, you know, <laughs> drool over here. <laughs> yep. We've got tons. Yes. <clears throat> So, and again, these are all eligible for the 25% discount. Um, if you have a gift card, you can use that for these. Um, these make great shawls, sweaters, or if you're looking um, at starting, getting started on holiday gift knitting, I know it's really early for that, but you've got a bunch of different skeins to choose from if you want to make hats for people. Um, ooh, this one caught my eye, the one with the hot pink in there. I guess I'm just pink-minded today. <laughs> but... Yeah, so we've got tons of those, and I will go ahead and put the link in the chat if um, Roxanne hasn't already. You can get grab bags. Oh, did here. I see a gradient one in the bottom there, too? I don't know. <laughs> Let me go back. Sorry, I think there was. Oh, there, there was a, there was one. Oh, hang on. I gotta, whoop. Let me get there again. Share my screen. It might have been the, the non-sparkle 400-yard uh, one. Uh, I'm sure it is. Yeah, that's what yes. it is. Milk chocolate. It looks like they oh sold they out got that for something specific. Because I, I didn't mean to get your hopes up. <laughs> yeah, um, but, but these are all you can see that they have kind of a color theme. They kind of coordinate together, but of course, like split them up however you see fit. They're just a grab bag, um, so you can't like pick one out of this and stick it with another one in a different grab bag, um, unless you buy both. Say, if you want to knit the baby surprise jacket, um, any of these um, grab bags with the DK might work because you could just do it in two colors. You could add some striping um, yeah. or contrast, whatever you want to do. Yeah, that would be really cool. So there's lots of these. I could keep scrolling for days, but check it okay. out. Remember you have until Sunday, March 12th. So that's a full week. Um, and um, yarn party is your code for 25% yes. off. And they do sell out though, that are, you know, because there's such out. limited of each one. <laughs> do you see one that you like? Keep yeah. checking. <laughs> um, all right. And so next we, I get to show my, um, my Zen. Yeah, Zen let's talk about what's behind you. Yes. yes. <laughs> and Catherine just, it was yes. still working on her, as she said, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm interested. Um, we in, did do a bit of long, um, we like a, I don't know, it was kind of a class along, <laughs> knit along um, for this one. It is a, um, a T pattern. What's unique about this one is that you cast on um, the length of the back and you knit around this way. And then you have live stitches here and you come back to this side and you knit around this way. And then you have um, this uh, a technique to, to join two sets of live stitches without any yarn. Um, so it's kind of a fun, it makes, it's hard to see it, but it makes like a little, um, it looks like a little zipper almost. So I call it the Zen zip. Um, and that's why it's called the Zen zip tee. Um, and the other really neat thing about this one is that you only need um, either one skein of the, um, the variegated or it was designed originally, oh my gosh, I don't have my other, my original one. <laughs> it was three different colors. So you used a different color um, here, um, and then another one on both sides, and then a third color in the front. Um, and so that is, <clears throat> and it's the same no matter what size. Um, so you just need more yarn in the, in either a dark, um, I either did black or 
here's another version. This is another version coming out with sleeves, um, but you could do white as your um, base color also, or any neutral color. Um, but it's designed so that you can really customize the size completely. So you choose the however long you want it to be. You choose, um, you measure your hips and your bust and you make it fit you exactly. Um, you can make it boxy if you want, or you can give it some more shaping or you can make it longer or shorter. Um, and I'm coming out with, I haven't published it yet because I'm horrible, but I have a sleeve <laughs> version coming too. You're busy. This is just a little sample. Um, you can choose your sleeve length also. Obviously you'll need a little bit more yarn um, for this version in the sleeves, but it is, it's coming out. Also, um, I just had to work out how to get it to flow. So this color flows all the way up the side and down the arm. Um, and then you have, um, it's a basically just a really wide bind off. It's like an eight stitch bind off that gets you the color on the sleeve here. So you knit it all um, in one piece and then you come back um, and you pick up, you've got stitches um, on holders for the sleeves and you knit a little bit of the cap and then you do this bind off with the other color to get that, uh, to get that edging. Um, so uh, this one is available. It's it's up on Ravelry. I'm sure we'll have the links. They're probably already there. Um, the but link to Ravelry? It, what? Yeah. Well, yes. I was going to say, we, I put the link to Ravelry in the thread, and then this is where you can find it on the website. This was the original. Yes, and, there's um, the original with the different it colors. It was done in three different colors that had kind of orange and teal in them. Um, you can see it a little bit more in the detail shots, like the back is definitely the spatter, and then the side is also variegated. Um, and then what we did is, this was something we did last, let me think about when I knit these, last spring before June H&H. &H, um, we, Zen Yarn Garden came out with all these different color combinations, and what they are is this one's kind of a yellow and purple, and this one's kind of a brown, orange, and red, and then this, this splatter has all of the colors in there. So we have sets, these come in sets of three, um, and what you have is you have enough to do your section in the front, your sections at the sides, and your section in the back. Each one is using a slightly different, these are mini, mini skeins, they're 100 yards a piece, um, and then you combine that with a neutral color. So you've mm -hmm. got all kinds of choices. You can go tropical, you can go, I, I have this one and I'm doing it with black and with the um, orange and green and purple, it makes it look very Halloween-like. Um, but we've got all kinds of different colorways, so you can sort of pick what you like. These come, these these three that you see here are packaged together, so we can't break that, but you have multiple choices on how you want to do it, and then you have a choice of whether you want to do um, light with our natural or black. Um, and then the other thing that you can do is um, there is an option to, we did the knit along um, in the spring, and um, well, I guess we did it December, January. I, I lie. We did the yarn in the spring. We did the knit along in December and January, and you can still purchase those sessions if you would like to watch them. Um, it's three one-hour Zoom sessions where we answer people's questions and we talk about techniques used in the pattern, and Suzanne demonstrates everything. So um, you don't get to actually see us and chat with us, um, but you get to watch the videos of when we did if you'd like to add that to purchase. So the purchase includes the pattern and the yarn, and then you can add on the tutorials if you really want to. Mm -hmm. This would also be a great one for that like one beautiful skein that you have or one that you see in the grab bags because you can just use that one color um, and then get neutrals um, to fill in the rest and and have a sweater out of your one favorite skein. So that's what I was thinking because oftentimes and you only have that one and then it's like, ah, I can't do a sweater or I can't, I don't know, do anything. But um, this is my- I will my, say this is this is all in fingering weight. Um, and the really nice thing about a fingering weight top is actually it's cool even when it's hot out, but it's actually nice to wear even as a layering piece um, in the cooler seasons. So you really can get, a, I, when I went through my um, drawers today, I was like, I really need to knit more tees because they really would fit in well with, with mm -hmm. my wardrobe. Yes. <laughs> You're wearing one. You should show that one off, Laura. I love that one. I am. This is the V-back tee, and I believe we still have that available on the website. This is knit in one and a bit of the Lux Cakes, and it's Jamie Hoffman's 
um, who is Nidosophy. And let me see if it's still, it's, I'm sure it's still up on the website, but let me grab a link for it. I didn't think it's about called that. the V back T, but uh, I always wear it like Laura wears it backwards with the V in the front. <laughs> and yes. she's designed it that way, but. Yeah, she but designed it, it so that it's reversible. Yes. Let me see. Let me see if I can get a link for everyone. I did turn off my screen sharing, didn't I? I hope you're not seeing me go through this whole thing. Nope, we're not. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're not. Oh, oh, good. <laughs> Okay, here's the link. Um, it shows it on the model in the colors that I have on mine that I am wearing. Um, the top color is called rice tie. Um, and then uh, the bottom was, uh, I think, razzleberry. Um, but you can order any gradients that you would like um, up to, like I said, I had one in a bit and the gradient cakes have 750 yards um, in them. So um, I would say- I got mine um, like a size 38 inch bust out of one, but it's tight. I mean, it's it fits me okay, but it's, it's like I was almost out of the yarn. Um, yeah, I was gonna say, I added a little bit extra to mine down at the bottom from the razzle yeah. cake where you can see the pink and the purple. Um, but I would say most sizes, because it's a T and because it's generous yardage, um, you can get um, you can get most most of you will be able to get one out of two cakes. Yeah, definitely. And I, I added some length to mine too. Um, so it's nice, it's easy to add length to the pattern. It's nice. <laughs> Um, you could likely use the glitter gradient for Stephen West's honeycombs patterns. Um, I I know he has a ton of them. Um, the only I I will say one check your yardage because I don't know exactly how long um, his gradients are in there. And two double check that the the specific pattern that you're looking at calls for fingering weight because these are fingering weight. Um, those are my only. But but yes, they would they would be fine in those. And then you would just need to pick some kind of a neutral for the like the honeycomb piece. Probably. Yeah, a contrast. Like I assume I you're say. thinking about doing it as the like pops. Mm -hmm. Uh pattern by itself. Oh, yes, I can do that. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I, clearly I wasn't as prepared as I could be, but yes. I know. I just sprung that on you because you're wearing it. It looks beautiful. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um the V back T is by Jamie Hoffman, and you can find it on Ravelry. <laughs> Uh, the shawl that Suzanne is wearing is called the Onward Shawl. And I have a link to that to you because we did talk about that one. Um, I'm not wearing a shawl. I'm actually just wearing a top. I know the question was to me and I assume it's the shawl that um, Suzanne is wearing. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, that can't, that can't and then we do have more Tutorial Tuesdays coming up. Um, even, um, one, we, we did a yoga one, um, a couple weeks ago. So if you haven't checked that out, take a look at that. Um, but we're going to do another one coming up too. So it's good for all, you know, all handy crafts, I would say, like if you, um, you know, have any friends that are, you know, I don't know, different crafts they might be interested in too. So knitting and crocheting is what the main kind of focus is, but I think it's good for a lot of you know, people that use our hands and need to relax and um, yeah, can, so that we can okay, continue. I added, I added the yoga one for the 11th. Remember, we also have two coming up in March. Those are the crochet ones. Crochet. And um, you do need to, like I said, you do need to register for all of these um, to get the link to be able to attend, but they are free and we would love to have you. Um, the other thing is that once we are done with the Tutorial Tuesdays, they go up on our YouTube channel. And so you can find all of our past Tutorial Tuesdays um, on our YouTube channel. I'm adding that here. Um, and you can see everything we've done um, we have, we've been doing Tutorial Tuesdays for about two years now, maybe two and I a half years I think we're on 50, now. we just did 52, I think, or something, so. Yeah, a lot. Um, they were something that Zen Yarn Garden decided to do during the pandemic, 
um, because we couldn't meet in person. And of course, we just decided to keep them up. We've done a wide variety of things. Sometimes we focus on a specific project and the techniques used in that project. Sometimes we focus on a technique or a skill like cast ons or bind offs or how to knit mosaic knitting or how to read a chart. Or um, you will just find a wealth of knowledge in those. And those are all free for you to watch. Um, and like I said, any future sessions are free for you to, you to attend. You just need to register to get the link. Mm -hmm. So and then and you can you ask questions to, live. Yeah, and you never have to buy any yarn. Of course, we love it if you do. Um, but if you have yarn and you want to knit from stash, that is entirely fine. Um, it's they, just all about coming out and learning. Yes, but they usually do let us give away gift cards there too. So <laughs> yes, and and you'll get good discounts on yarn. I I'm certainly. Um, you will add the discount code when you get to checkout. So when you go to checkout and it starts to ask you for your name and payment information, there's also a spot to enter the discount code. Yeah. Sorry, there, there was a question about if I have yarn in my shopping cart, at which point do I get to add the discount code? Yes. You you will not have to click submit your order before you enter your discount code, but you do actually have to get to the point where you're entering your information. Um, you, I, I think you can add the discount code before you add your credit card. So that shouldn't be an issue. Is the discount code of yarn party two words or one? One. One word. Thank you. And does it matter if it's capitalized or lowercase? I don't think it matters, but it's capitalized in my notes. So okay. if that makes yes. a difference. So I would capitalize it. I might I might do it all uppercase then. And it, yeah. And it's yeah. All, it was all uppercase, yeah. 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 And I can apply that to get another Zen Zip T if I want. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Yes, it applies to everything yeah. on the site. There isn't anything yeah. that's excluded. And I just and posted it again. It's yarn party, yeah. all one word. Yep. Um, and you get 25% off site wide until March 12th. Sorry. Fabulous. <laughs> and, and the last thing, Suzanne, do you have any notion as to when the longer sleeved version of Zen Zip T will be available? We talking it's, six months a year or no, no, no months, I would say. Oh, good. Then I'll just keep, I mean it's uh, done. I've knit it a couple times now, and I just need to, you know, get all of my notes onto the paper in a you know organized fashion, which takes a little longer than sometimes I think it should. I, I would say we're talking we're talking one to two months. Oh great. Yes. I'll just keep checking the website. <laughs> Like um, after that, so because teas <laughs> in various sizes are are just part of my essential wardrobe year round. So that's yeah. Yeah. and I I just love the the uh, Zen Zip. The, there's enough regular knitting and enough little specialized stuff that you're challenged without being overwhelmed, and that's Yay. really good balance. So <laughs> thank you, thank you. Roxanne asked <clears throat> if we'll do a knit along for the new one, Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> for the knit along for the sleeved one maybe maybe Ooh, we yeah. could just do maybe we could just do an addendum session for um like the changes that are different for the sleeves yeah or we could yeah, go through we the could. Whole or i mean if there's enough interest we could do the we could do the long sleeve one too um it's a tiny bit different because you're knitting it around um so when you're doing the short sleeve version you get to just um put this section on holders and then knit and then cast back on some and then keep going. But for the sleeved one, you have to, um, you actually uh, like put these on holders, but then you have to cast on more stitches so that you you actually work this um, section all the way up along here. Um, and you have them kind of flapping around until you get back to those sleeves. <laughs> um, but it's it's a fun one. It's It's, it's, you know, I wanted it to be able to still like flow all together and um, it's still like knit in one kind of one feel fell swoop so that you um, don't have to calculate, you know, exactly how much you need for some different sections. Um, I mean, it's all in the pattern what, you, what to calculate for, but I wanted you to still be able to just use one skein for the colored work. Um, <clears throat> you'll need more than just the mini skeins that you can use for this one. Um, so this one will have to do kits where we use um, either, I did use, for this one, this sample, I used the um, one pack of the Jump in the Pool yarns because I just love this color. And even though I didn't use it quite like pooling, it, it still pools a little bit. 
Um, but uh, you could use one skein of that or one of the jump in the pool sets and then neutrals. Um, so, but we'll have to, we'll get that all organized later. <laughs> I'm very that's, excited that's, about that's that. Why, so. That's why it's going to take us a month or two. <laughs> Okay, I'll Take get back in time. and have motivation get, now. Sometimes I need people time. to motivate me. <laughs> yeah. You need to get the pattern right. So take your time. I'll be <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, make sure. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say that we're going to continue to dye pooling yarns. I don't know precisely when. Um, there was a question about will there be more pooling yarns. I'm sure Neville will get back to the dye pots. Let me also um, pull the pooling yarns since someone mentioned it. I don't know if there are any yeah, there now. There are probably a couple. <laughs> Let's see. Yes. We went through a phase earlier this year where we worked on, well, I guess it, technically it was last year, where we worked on a number of patterns with pooling yarns. Mm -hmm. um, and we have some of those available still. Those are yarns that are designed um, in kind of a color block. Um, mm -hmm. They have a bit longer color repeats, so you can just do some different interesting things um, with those. I had a question from Edith. What skill level is needed for this? If you are talking about um, Suzanne Zenzip T, I would say probably advanced beginner. Um, you, you need to know how to knit two together. You need to know how to do some really, really basic short rows. Um, you need to um, be able to sort of calculate your row gauge and stitch gauge and apply that to your own measurements. Um, but there's nothing that's inherently complicated. It's both mm -hmm. stockinette and a little bit of garter. So it's not, um, I, I would, I don't know, maybe, maybe you feel differently. Yeah, no, I would say, I mean, I'm all about like an adventurous beginner can do anything. Like you just have to work through it. Um, but, but I did try and make it clear in the pattern and I put all of the like calculations um, spelled out for you. And I even gave you little spots to write in your uh, numbers and then how, what you need to do to them to get the right, um, you know, a number for, for what your size is. Um, it's a little bit forgiving. Um, and I did do a short um, YouTube videos that are linked in the pattern um, for just very specific techniques. And then, like we said, if you really <clears throat> want the extra, um, um, you know, detailed explanations, that is available in our recorded uh, knit along that we did. Um, so that's. I'm definitely an advanced, nervous beginner. <laughs> And you did great. <laughs> and as a result of the tutorials, in addition to the beautifully written pattern, I'm fine. So oh, you. Uh, you can be a, a you know an adventurous beginner knitter and manage the Zen Zip T. And, and then I'll I can I hold your hand a lot of the way. Yeah. So <laughs> and that's what that's why I uh, paid for the tutorials, and they're they're worth every penny because of the hand holding. So thank you for that. And thank you. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Have, Maybe we can do, you know, the long sleeve one if we have yeah, um, that would be great. Interest or, or we like a uh, or we had a question from Amanda about whether we need test or sample knitters. Um I don't know whether you need test or sample knitters, uh Sometimes. Suzanne, <laughs> on, on your upcoming designs. And um otherwise I'll let Roxanne answer that. <laughs> Because yeah, I'm sure yeah, yeah, we always say right to now, email, but... um, email Roxanne. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Amanda, funny. if you want to, if you want to email Roxanne, that's probably the um, best way to do that. And it's can we help you at zenyarngarden.com. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Yay. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah. Um, I just need more time in the day, right? Can anybody give me that? <laughs> yeah, I know. We we all need like five more hours in the day to craft. Yeah. That that I'm only allowed to knit during. That would be the, you know, <laughs> like not allowed to do anything else, just knit. <laughs> so does anyone have any other questions? Otherwise, I think we're about ready to wrap up. They don't have to be about what we covered today. Um, yeah, I've got can my be, but... rack here with all of my samples <laughs> in the back. And I love seeing some of your projects. Like I know Willa just finished her uh, Cloud Nine one. I love it. Thank you, Willa. That looks great. <laughs> and all right. Um, 
Yay, I love to see here you guys working on things and <laughs> I saw somebody's son stole their uh, jump in the pool cowl. <laughs> for their... Good luck on the new job, Laura. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I hope, I hope you're looking forward to it. I am. Um, I'm, I'm slightly leaving knitting and, and going into quilting. I'm going to be working for Missouri Star Quilt Company. So in their marketing Fabulous. department. And I start tomorrow morning. So we'll see. I'm not a quilter yet. So my <laughs> boss keeps keeps placing bets on how long it's going to take to to bring me over to a new craft. <laughs> I'm um, a beginner quilter, so you never know. I there you go. Well, well, I'll hit you up when I need when I need yeah. stuff. Okay. Um, <laughs> Shana, I will pass your request along. Um, and thank you to everyone who uh, a few people have um, have uh, wished me luck privately, and I, I appreciate that very much. Um, and yes, they are. They're they're lovely. Um, if you put two fingering weights together, does that make a DK? Somewhere between a DK and a worsted. worsted um, yeah. So I would um, I would swatch. I know it's a dirty word, but I would swatch to make sure. But yes, um, you, you can you can get approximating there. Um, oftentimes they'll tell you to put a fingering weight um, and like a lace weight together to get a DK. For instance, that's what they do in the love note pattern. They have you use a fingering weight and then like a DK mohair because it's a little fluffy. Um, so you might end up closer to a worsted weight. Yay. All right. I saw lots of comments. I didn't get a chance to really read all of them, but um, if there's any last questions, please um, raise your hand or or put it there. And I think Laura and Roxanne have been keeping a better eye on things than I can. <laughs> We're trying. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming and joining. It's been really fun. And we can't wait to see you at the next like tutorial uh, Tuesday or knit along or anything. We're always open for suggestions. So please um, reach out with any. And yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Have a good night. And we hope to good see you again night. soon.